Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the contribution margin income statement which is used for analysis and decision making. Analysis and decision making means it's used for internal purposes. So this statement is not GAAP, not generally accepted accounting principle. The best way to illustrate the difference between traditional income statement GAAP and contribution margin is to actually look at both statements side by side to study the differences. So this is a gap and this is a contribution margin income statement. Let's take a look at gap first. We have sales minus cost of goods sold, sales of 100,000 minus 60,000 will give us something called the contribute the gross margin. From the gross margin, we are going to deduct our selling and administrative expenses, which in turn, which in turn will give us net operating income. Under the contribution income statement, we're also going to start with sales, which it should be the same 100,000 minus variable expenses. So what we do here is we separate our expenses. We emphasize between the expenses that changes when the level of activity changes and the one that don't. Well, what does that mean? It means we're breaking our expenses into variable expenses and fixed expenses. So 100,000 minus 55 will give us 45,000. We call this contribution margin, not gross margin. Gross margin is a gap term. Contribution margin is not gap. It's basically for management purpose, contribution margin. Then from the contribution margin, we deduct the fixed expenses. Fixed expenses are unaffected by the level of activity. Remember, fixed expenses by nature, they don't change versus variable expenses, which are consist of mainly direct material, direct labor, variable overhead, and we have to include also any variable period cost. Then from those, we'll get to the net operating income. Notice the net operating income is the same whether you are using the traditional or the contribution margin. But the contribution margin will help management understand better how changes in production and sales will affect the bottom line. That's the purpose of it. So to, to put it in a dollar amount, let's assume we are selling 10,000 units, 10,000 units for this company. If we're selling 10,000 units, it means we're selling each unit for $10. And this is how we came up with 100,000. If that's the case, our variable expenses is 55,000, which is so the selling price is $10 per unit. Uh, the variable expenses must be $5.50, $10 minus five, $5.55, it's going to give us $4.50 in contribution margin minus the fixed expenses. So, so here we are, we are looking at per dollar, per each unit, not per dollar, per each unit. So how does that help? Simply put, from a management perspective, now we know for every dollar in sale, simply put, Every dollar in sale has to be has to be split between variable expenses, variable cost and contribution margin. Here the variable the variable cost is five dollars and fifty cent and what's left for the contribution margin is four fifty. Now this contribution margin will have to cover your fixed expenses and whatever is left will be considered net operating income. So the point is to know what is your contribution margin. And once you know your contribution margin, you will need to know how many units you need to sell to cover your fixed cost. Once you cover your fixed cost, once you know how many units you need to sell to cover your fixed cost, everything from the contribution margin, once you cover fixed cost, will start to flow to net operating income. So the contribution margin income statement will help managers make better decision about the company, better decision in terms of how many units I need to sell to break even, how many units Am, am I going to need to sell before I incur a loss? Uh, what 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 happened if my if my sales increase by five thousand unit or decrease by five thousand unit? What happened if I increase my variable expenses or reduce my variable expenses? What happened if I change some of my fixed expense into a variable expense or I change my variable expense into fixed expense? All these questions, the contribution margin income statement will help you answer them. We're not going to answer them here in this session, but don't worry, we're going to answer those questions later on when we talk about cost, volume, profit analysis. But in this session, all what you want you to know is what is the contribution margin income statement? How does it differ from the traditional? How does it differ? Well, the expenses here, we have 70,000 of expenses, 60 plus 10 equal to 70. True. All what we did here is we took those expenses and we broke them into variable cost and fixed cost expenses, which is 50, 55 plus 15 also equal to 70. That's all what we did. We broke them down. And the reason we did so for decision making purposes. At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate. 
take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I'm a useful addition. I can contribute to your CPA studies. I can provide you alternative resources, lectures, multiple choice, CPA questions that's going to help you prepare for the exam. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other accounting courses. I have the AI CPA previously released questions and my CPA exam courses are aligned with your review course such as Gleam, Wiley, Roger, Becker, so on and so forth. Good luck. Study hard and of course, stay safe.